What I want to do in the two or three minutes I've got is not to complete the story, but to provide you with a taster of what I hope I'll be able to say during the course of the debate, either through the invitation uh, of the, uh, the chair or if questions are asked. Um, because the latter, two, the latter two areas which I think should go into the meat of the debate is why things have happened to Radio Scotland over the last 10 years and most importantly, because I will try to be as positive as I can, what in terms of the professionals should be done to try and resurrect the channel to the position it should be and as people, people have been implying has to be in the newly emerging, the newly emerging Scotia. Uh, now, th th there, is one, there is one further point before I begin, and that is there's been much attention paid tonight to resource. The general view of those individuals, and there was about eight or nine of them that I spoke to, is that if there's a division of interest between resource and attention to what should be done, it's the latter which is the more important. This is not to say that Radio Scotland and the Beeb in general in Scotland does not require more resource. Of course it does. Um, and there are some very illuminating comparisons with Radio 4 in terms of protection and particular programmes of the flagship nature on Radio 4, which have been protected over time, um, which I don't know whether your committee dug up this, this information, because my sense, Joan, was that the BBC representatives, despite the grilling, got away with murder, especially in relation to some of the things I've been learning over the last week or 10 days or so. Radio Scotland wins for the second year in succession Station of the Year Award. The controller of Radio Scotland has established such a national, international reputation that he is headhunted by Radio 4 to become their next controller. The Scottish press regularly enthuse about Radio Scotland as a vibrant and very relevant station. The Sony Award in, 19, in, in the period I'm talking about, the Sony Award, which is the Radio Oscars, was given to GMS, Good Morning Scotland. Nominations to these awards occurred regularly, or did occur regularly at that time. Staff morale was high. The station took pride in its status and on the accolades given to it. And again, there was hardly any dissent in the sources that I inquired of hardly any dissent about that statement that I've given you. But that statement refers to the 1990s. It does not refer to the year 2012. So we fast forward. A contributor earlier this year in spring to the I Write Festival in a debate more generally about the Scottish condition and about Scottish independence, off the cuff says, BBC Radio Scotland is a national humiliation, cheered to the echo by the packed audience, cheered by Ian McWhirter. Not that he was cheering, he was simply cheering the event. <laughs> because, as he's already said, he doesn't agree with Professor Devine on these issues. But very impartially, he cheered uh, that, particular, that particular experience. One senior producer, who I particularly respect because of his record, said he is phoned weekly by colleagues who are still there wanting to know how to get out. This is not redundancy by coercive financial means. This is redundancy because the morale in that station is so low. I'll come on to some of the specifics of it when we get to the debate stage. There is complete virtual contempt for senior management on the part of those who are actually the foot soldiers and the, if you like, the, 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 um, the officers and the NCO class in that, particular, that, in that particular station, which, of course, they dared not raise in public fora 
because they are still employed uh, by the organisation. There is no evidence that I have come across listening to people and also appearing on Radio Scotland that there is anything really wrong, despite the great hemorrhage, there's anything really wrong with the skilled personnel who are front of house, who actually do the business. The problem with Radio Scotland, as I shall discuss if given the opportunity in the second part of tonight, is in another area. And that area is verging on the Aegean stable in terms of the information that's been given to me by people whom I both trust and respect for their professional expertise. This is what one former senior producer says of the kind of programming that he has to listen to, given the number of times he and his colleagues received accolades in the 1990s. Inept pap, which is embarrassing and demeaning. We all know the programmes he's referring to. We dare not mention them, perhaps, but we all know <clears throat> what they are. It's an, it's an enormous tragedy, ladies and gentlemen, that as many Scottish listeners tune in to the Today programme now as to Good Morning Scotland. According to one source, and I cannot be certain about this, others around the table may know for more certain, like Ewan, who does a lot of work for Radio Scotland, is that Good Morning Scotland does not have a dedicated producer anymore. How has a one mighty, once mighty, perhaps not perfect, but an outstanding organisation which existed in the 1990s come to this pass? So there's two analytical issues that need to be discussed, in, at least as far as RS is concerned, in the second part of the evening. One is the reasons for decline, or relative decline, according to the evidences, and this is not my view, the evidences I've tried to gather, and secondly, what can be done about it. And a number of the points raised by these individuals that I, that I talk to are cogent and doable, even without additional resource. Thank you.